morning. This is very, very exciting to be here. We've had a great lineup. I want to start off by thanking both Eastman and East Tennessee State University for providing this opportunity to come out and talk about innovation. When you think about innovation, you often think business, industry, and sometimes healthcare, but usually K-12 public education. Does innovation pop into your mind when you're thinking of that domain? Honestly? Typically not. Now we've seen Leif Cook was up here and Megan did a wonderful job, but we're going to talk about it from the lens of Kingsport City Schools and what we're doing to embrace innovation. And basically what we're doing is we're using the Baldrige framework, which I know probably several of you are very familiar with, and we're using that as our continuous improvement cycle and our model that we're using. So let's get started. The teacher and me, and I'm sorry, I'm a former first grade and third grade teacher, have to go through our presentation objectives. So our objectives today is, first of all, we're going to examine innovation from the definition pulled exactly from the Baldrige framework. framework. Then we're going to see how it's interwoven all throughout the framework and also how it's used to drive the continuous improvement cycle and process. And then finally, we're going to look at innovation through the lens of Kingsport City Schools and how we're using that to drive our continuous improvement model and cycle. So let's start out with a Baldrige definition. I want to pull out three important components or pieces from the definition. First off, it's adoption. Adopting an idea, a process, technology, or educational model. That's very, very important. But then the second component or part of that, it's either new or new to its proposed application. Something that you're doing different. When you look at K-12 education, what is often said? they're doing the same thing that they were doing 20, 30 years ago. We're trying to make sure that that is not what is said about Kingsport City Schools. Then finally, the biggest part through there, it is a breakthrough change in results, a breakthrough change in products or in the process. So those are the three components we're gonna look at through this definition. As I said, we use the Baldridge framework as a model for continuous improvement. And through that, we've also pa partnered with Tennessee Center for Performance Excellence, or TNCPE. We actually designed an educational crosswalk for K-12 public education systems to just show how the work through the profile here and through the criteria actually can be embedded in the work of the school systems. And for those that might not be familiar, I do want to give you a crash course on this. At the bottom, you see the core values. And those are the concepts. These are basically the guiding tenets that drive the organization. It's belief systems. That's what makes a system or an organization excellent. At the top there, you're going to see the organizational profile. For organizations that actually utilize the criteria, this is basically a five-page summary or self-assessment that the organization does. It talks about its competitive environment, its workforce profile, its strategic advantages, its challenges. But an important piece of that is how do you drive continuous improvement? So that's contained in that organizational profile. Then you have on the left side, you have the leadership triad. You look at how the senior leaders develop the strategy that impacts the customers. So that's called the leadership triad. Over to the other side, you have the workforce and operations. So how does your workforce develop and construct the operations to give you the results that you need? And then at the bottom, you have your measurement, analysis, and your knowledge management. Again, that is maintaining and measuring your progress as you go, but it's also that transfer of the relevant knowledge. So how is that used in Kingsport City Schools and how are we using this? But more importantly, how is the innovation interwoven throughout the framework? Okay, we're going to start off with core values and concepts. Remember, those are those guiding tenets and those are what's very, very important to build this framework. They talk about managing for innovation, but what exactly do they mean? There's actually three purposes for this. It means to make meaningful changes, it means to make improvements to your organization's service, the programs, the process, the operations, but it also the purpose, and very, very important, is to create new value for your customer or your stakeholders. For Kingsport City Schools, our primary customer is a student. That's who we're there for. Our stakeholders are both our parents and our community at large, but we look at the customers, the students, as our primary objective in meeting their needs. So we're gonna talk about how we do that. Going to the very top there, you see the organization profile, and it's going to look at your different opportunities for innovation that you have within your organization. But then not only that, how do you implement innovation throughout your organization? 
you get to the leadership c category and it talks about it's basically a two-pronged category where you look at creating an environment for innovation but not only that how do you focus on actions that are going to help you to achieve innovation well you do that through your strategy and that's when you stimulate and incorporate innovation into your strategic development process and hopefully that strategy is going to help in the next category the customers where you're going to use that information to identify opportunities for improvement so what information are you collecting from your customers to make sure that you're meeting their needs going down to the measure analysis and knowledge management you also look at innovation from the perspective of how are you drawing innovation from your performance reviews and also the important transfer of knowledge that you do very very important then you get to the workforce and you it's again a two-pronged area where you're going to look at the reinforcement of workforce performance but then also how are you supporting innovation through the learning and development system of your workforce operation is talking about innovation management and it's more than what we're talking about the core values and concepts but it's actually what are those uh, potential intelligent risks that you need to pursue when do you start with them when do you stop them how do you make the resources available so these are all the different parts of that managing innovation and then finally, you get to the results, which is extremely important. When you're looking at innovation, what are your process effectiveness and your efficiency results? Are you meeting and making the results that are needed? So do you think that innovation is slightly interwoven through the Baldrige framework? Yes or no? This is when you speak back. Yes or no? Yes. This is the way we, my um, preacher does at church. He always says, you either answer or we'll start back at the beginning. So do you see innovation interwoven through? Yes, okay, I heard a big yes that time. So that gives you a very, very quick preview. But let's talk about how Kingsport City Schools, how do we utilize innovation? How do we do that in a public school system? Well, part of it is we're making sure that we're not settling for mediocrity. We're always looking for innovative ways to push ourselves, but most of all our students to that next level. So we're going to talk about exactly how we use this Baldrige framework as a model in helping us drive the continuous improvement cycle. It's based primarily on this visioning process. Our superintendent has a phrase that he likes to use, and he says, we don't want random acts of kindness. He said, we can't do things randomly. Instead, we need to do things with a purpose. And there needs to be a plan behind that. So that's what we do. If you look at this, I'm going to walk you through very, very quickly. It starts off with our guiding tenets. The guiding tenets for Kingsport are involved with our mission, vision, values. We have key practices. We have goals. We have key questions. All these build up our guiding tenets. These are held very, very closely and dear to our heart. Meaning, when we start this process, if it doesn't align with the guiding tenets, that's our stop sign right there because we're not going to pursue it any further. That is our measuring to stick to see if we're even going to start a venture. Then you get into the research, which is just not reading about something, but you're actually going, you're conducting site visits. You're going on site to see how actually it is being, um, the processes are being undertaken. Then you take those findings and you're going to simulate the information to produce an improvement model. And through that improvement model, you'll have the instructional initiatives and you also have the instructional impact on the students. And then finally, we have our launch forward, which is partly the action plan that we look at, but it's also looking at the results. Are we achieving where we want to do? Now, I want you to pause for a second. You might have to glance up really close, but if you'll see at the top, through the middle at the bottom, you see those brown lines. This is also constructed. This is something that we did. We said, we hold the Baldrige framework very clear and dear. It is our continuous improvement cycle. So we made sure that our visioning process also aligned with the framework. So basically, if you start at the top there, the guiding team that sets the leadership, that's how the senior leaders set that direction. That's where they take those mission, vision, and value statements, and they drive the organization. Well, they do that through our strategy, which is the research that's conducted, the simulation of the findings, and then the development of the improvement model. Then when you get down to this bottom corner, you look at the instructional initiatives. That's the part that the workforce carries through. This is the job that they're doing to move this forward. And then you see the instructional impact. I told you our key customers are our students. So therefore, we're seeing the impact that this is going to have on the students. And then finally, launching forward, which deals with our results. Are we making the progress that we need to make? 
Not only that, you see the measurement component, which is all the way interwoven through. When you looked at the framework, it had integration because the nice thing about it is all of these categories are working in tandem. It's not like that leadership is a separate silo over there by itself. Instead, all of these categories are working together to get to this final product. And that's that measurement piece that runs all the way through this. So that's giving you a glimpse, I'll say, of the Baldrige framework and innovation and also our visioning process. But what does that mean for Kingsport City Schools? Well, I'm going to tell you very quickly a few stories. One of them is our Regional Science and Technology Center. Imagine a center where students can actually work with scientists on real products. Imagine a center where students will actually have hands-on approach to the most relevant technological tools and resources that scientists use. Well, that's what we're trying to envision. And let me tell you a little bit about our process. We talked about the vision process. We want to show you an, exact, an, excuse me, an actual example of this. This is from DB 2.0. And basically, our principal, Dr. Chris Hampton, was asked several years ago, where do you see Dobbins Bennett down the road? What's it going to look like for students? How is it going to be different? What, are you, what courses will you be offering? How are you going to change with times? So this was a major undertaking. This wasn't a simple brainstorming session and we're going to get together. Again, not the random acts of kindness. Instead, we implemented this DB 2.0 visioning process. It started out with a review of our guiding tenets and then research. It was very important. The research also incorporated multiple focus groups. For example, it looked at our past students and also our current students and also their parents from both of those. It looked at our community and industry leaders. We looked at our teachers. We did focus groups with them. But not only that, we looked at the seven top institutions and colleges that our students are going to and they're matriculating to, and we said, please come in. Tell us what our students need to have. So all these students, all these parents, all these industry leaders, these college and university professionals came in and they provided focus group instruction, which led to our research findings and we focus these on curricular initiatives and also facilities. It's going to be very important when we're talking about the Regional Science Center. Then we developed our improvement model, which was based around four areas, curriculum, technology, facilities, and personnel. From there, we went to our instructional initiatives. But then one of the most important parts, we, said this, we had to stop and say, how is this going to impact our students? What relevance will this have? So we had to look at, how is this going to impact AP or dual enrollment? How's this going to impact ACT and college readiness? How will this impact our community and making it more sustainable? And then finally, we had our launching forward, which was actually our process in taking our improvement model and moving forward. This is, again, another model of this, but what I want to draw your attention up to right there in the top corner, that Community Science and Technology Center. This has been a byproduct of this entire large vision. This is only one component or one piece of that. But you see that the purpose behind this visioning process is helping us take, us take us out in different arenas and different tangents. This is another, as you can see, Kingsport City Schools, we do like our infographics. Sorry about that. But it helps us think big. Instead of just saying, we're going to build a regional science center, we say, what can this propose for the community? What can it propose for our parents? What can it propose for higher ed? But most importantly, how can it impact students? Again, going back to that customer focus. So we were looking at different areas, like looking at authentic research, looking at economic development, looking at the supplemental and co-curricular ideas, college credits, all these different things of how it could impact. So where are we at, where are we at now in this process? Well, you saw where we looked at our guiding tenants and did our visioning process, and we did our D DB 2.0 study. We actually have constructed a vision for this journey. We've established mission and goals that are directly aligned with this regional science center. Not only that, we've conducted research, which has included site visits. We've been going to other facilities and things like this. And we've also looked at other programming pedagogy. We have tasked different teachers to do a task force to look at exploring programs and needs, refining our practices. And we actually currently have architects that are designing a model of what this may look like. So we're very, very excited. Let me give you another quick example. Dobbins Bennett Excel or DB Excel. At our high school, we have about 2,200 students. That can be very intimidating for many students. So a lot of them want a smaller environment. So you see your model down the bottom. That was the model from our visioning process. But imagine a site smaller 
where you have online and blended learning, a combination of computer-based along with teachers. Flexible scheduling for the students to move at their own pace. Think of an area where you have personalized learning and growth, where the students can get that individualized attention and work according to their time schedule. And not only that, having an engagement and work opportunities where you can actually work on dual enrollment and have students industry certified prepared to go into the workforce. So that's what we're looking at at DB Excel. Also talking about innovation, we've looked at ways that we can both manage and look at it from judging and criteria perspective, but also helping them think through that. One way was we developed an innovation rubric several years ago, because we said, how is this fulfilling our needs? So we actually do this, and for those that are involved in TNCP and Baldridge, we actually do our cycle of learning annually on this to make sure we're on the right pace. Not only that, we devised an innovation tool which helps our workforce think through important questions when they're thinking about an innovative idea or practice. And most recently, we're very excited, we're actually rolling this out, and our technology or IT department has developed an innovation tool where actually our workforce can go in and submit different innovative ideas to their um, supervisors, where it's a department head, their principal, or if it's central office, just their department leader. Looking again, think of this. We have an administrative support center. We've changed that from central office to an ASC. We give back volunteer hours to our schools. We give anywhere from 1,200 to 1,500 hours each year. And this is volunteer time that we give back so that teaching assistants and others can stay and impact the students in education. And again, this was an innovative idea and a repurposing of our central office. Finally, one thing I'd like to hit is probably one of the most exciting, we have to thank Eastman for this, who's also a partner, but we're introducing a new oceanography course with live research. And what's exciting is Dobbins Bennett will be the only school in the state of Tennessee to be starting this and one of the few across the country. So we want to thank Eastman who's helping sponsor this and also the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute along with Carol Ann Clayson. So how has this impacted Kingsport City Schools? This just gives you a brief representation. Um, I'm not going to go through this due to the lack of time, but is it making a difference for Kingsport City Schools? It sure is. Thank you for your time today.